Large's restaurant takes a bit of explaining. The White House on the cliff is a private residence with a commanding view of the bay. It has a long but very narrow open porch. The production team rents this property each season for the sole purpose of creating Large's restaurant. It takes about a day to build the structure that looks so natural on screen. Here we get a bit ahead of ourselves. The PR folks are in town and the official photographer is taking publicity stills of Ian and Joe at the back of the porch. Might as well take advantage of some downtime. At the front of the house, you can see just how tight and small things are on Ross Carrick Road. There's really not a lot of space in which to maneuver, and that's just on the public roadway. Let's show you what's going on in the faux restaurant. We follow Naomi Phillipson, the press officer, through the gate and down a very steep set of stairs. Rubes and I are down where the action is, or is going to be. This view gives you a sense of how steep it is down to the porch. To keep the shooting lines clear, space is at a premium. Simon, the audio technician, and his assistant are set up on an offshoot above the porch. You'll remember at the Crab and Lobster they were tucked away in a side room. Rubes is taking advantage of the downtime by snagging an interview with Joe Absalom. It's begun to sprinkle, so Naomi is holding an umbrella over Joe. Apparently, no one's too concerned about how Rubes looks. Meanwhile, take another look at just how cramped things are. The only way to access the porch is via these steep stairs. At the foot of the stairs are the makeup folks and the continuity ladies. That beaded door that you see is part of the set design, as is the wooden crossbar and all of the stuff stuck on the walls and beams. It's hard to see, but the lady in the black raincoat and hood has just distributed pastries and she's followed by the soup. Let's apply some tried and true sports techniques to help you observe the handoff. Here's the soup and it's gulp and go. As we've told you, Larges isn't a real restaurant. The caterers have to bring everything down those steep steps. Here you get a sense of the detail that goes into each scene. I'm chatting with location manager Johnny Bamford as his team continues to apply detailing touches that will make this so convincing on camera. The production team are all linked by a communication system. The crew are aware of what's going on thanks to a series of walkie-talkies and in-ear monitors. At the moment, the 16mm camera is coming up to speed and Ian is preparing to shoot a scene where he walks toward Al on the balcony. The crew member is positioned where he cannot be seen by the camera. Ian is waiting for the cue to do his business before turning and walking into position with Joe for the dialogue sequence to follow. Before we go, here's an example of how real life intrudes on location. A group of sea kayakers paddle into the harbor but of course, they're encroaching on the camera's view and they're making all sorts of noise. It's not as disruptive as the helicopter that was circling overhead earlier, but it does create a disruption. While the morning snack is an eat and run affair, lunch is much more serious. Cast and crew select from a predetermined menu early in the morning and it's brought to the set. So, we actually did get to eat at Large's restaurant. Well, some of us did. Here are Rubes and Paul preparing to chow down. Ian is about to do the same in the background. Later on, back at the farm, we celebrate the irony of a small van advertising a large restaurant.